All right, loading trailers. Well, there's one other thing I hadn't talked about, and that's, I'm, I keep, I'm gonna bring this up just because it's a hot topic right now and on my mind, are bulls. Uh, handling bulls is, I'm, I've known four people that got killed or seriously injured this year by, by bulls. We've gotta be very careful in the way we handle them because when they look at you, they may not be bluffing and they may catch you when you're not paying attention. So bulls are very unpredictable. The same techniques work on bulls, but they do not take pressure as well. And if you've got a bull looking at you and you make a big move to get him to move away from you, he may come at you rather than away from you. And so that's something, their fight or flight mechanisms backwards for most cattle. They'd rather fight than flee. And so be careful when you're working bulls and always, if, if at all possible, have somebody else around. The last one I've got into, a guy was, went to California to buy a bull. The guy told him the bull was gentle. He went in the pen to look at him, decided to buy the bull. They went to load him and the bull nearly killed the guy that was going to buy him. So they're very unpredictable in how they respond to all of that. All right, so next thing I wanted to end this on was transportation and loading these cattle. And we can do this a couple of different ways. I'm gonna demonstrate one, and I think these little calves are ready to get away from me and they'll probably get on the trailer pretty easy. We, we were doing this at uh, one demo, I don't even remember where we were at. And we brought the cattle in here and they just jumped on the trailer. And this lady said, well, what would you do if they didn't do that? I said, well, they did it because we put our pressure right and they just went and got on the trailer. She couldn't believe that, so. Loading trailers is no different. If I had a system where I had a bud box or something like that, I would take and go out the opposite side of the bud box with a loadout for my trailers if I had a, the ability to do that. You can use your same bud box for loading both, okay? It, that, a lot of feedlots are going to using bud boxes. And the reason they're doing that is they can really load a lot of cattle pretty quick. Now, if these cattle break this little old small chain, somebody run down there and start putting boards in that gap. Maybe it'll be all right. That's actually not what I want to do right now. If we can load trailers like we do bud boxes, it gets really, really easy. So let me redo this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If this is my alleyway, most oftentimes we'll have the gate set, we'll bring all the cattle and put them in the trailer, just pushing from behind. I want to show you a little something different makes it work very similar to what we've been doing all along here. All right, kids. I think they're kind of enjoying the big fans and cool weather in here. They're acting a little different than they did when we first started, aren't they? A little. We still have those guys. <clears throat> and they left before I was ready. If he's over here too far, he, oh, don't do it. Oh, spook. This is something new now, isn't it? They don't wanna, they don't know what I'm asking here. But it's their idea to get in there and take the pressure off. All I gotta do is start the front, rest of them will go. All right, 
And like I said, these cattle would probably run up there and jump on the trailer without any issues. But <clears throat> this is something that you can do and it makes your alleyway work basically like a bud box. If you've got somebody at the front or you've got a good setup to do this, the biggest problem is getting cattle, the first one to jump on the trailer. And the issue with being behind them is you can't put pressure on the front without putting too much pressure sometimes on the back. And so what I actually like to do, at all possible, is we'll actually come to the trailer side to where I can make the first ones go easier and the rest of them will get on. I'm not gonna split this group. We could if we wanted to. Now here's something else, when cattle get sticky like this, you can step up higher a lot of times and it'll actually put more pressure, but if they'll turn, I wanna get them all kind of started. And when they start, rather than push them all at one time, we're always worried about those that own the trailer coming off. But if it's their idea to get on, they're not gonna worry about it. They're not coming off that quick. And I know y'all can't see this, but they're all up almost past the cut gate. And when it's their idea to get on there, they're gonna change, they're gonna loosen up a little bit, but see how quiet they are on the trailer? Don't have to worry about rushing up there to close the gate. It was their idea to take the pressure off and get on the trailer. So many people get hurt by rushing to slam that gate when the cattle are trying to come off. So it's kind of fun to watch how easy and how long they'll stay on a trailer when you load them that way. Now, do y'all want to leave them on the trailer or we're going to take them back off? Anybody here in charge? Well, I'm, I'll take them off. We'll load them again later. Be on water that way. But see, they're just now starting to loosen up in the trailer. And so they're pretty quiet, but they're finding their spot in the trailer and loosening up a little bit. And if they want to get off, they can come off. But right now, that's where they've had the least amount of pressure in a while. So we'll just see what they do. But if loading trailers, you can get that front to go. It's the same thing we'll talk about in loading semis. If you can get the front to start, they're going to pull the rest of them on. And I don't know how many times I've seen the truck driver smoke by going up there trying to close that little gate in the middle or close a cutoff gate because they force the cattle on the truck. The next thing they're going to want to do is barrel off of there, take that pressure off. They're just trying to get closer to the front, I think, now. But to me, that's really interesting to watch how they do that. And it's real easy for them to get on a trailer and find them a spot and be quiet once they do that. So the tra trailer loading aspect of it, to me, is, is not as hard as we try to make it be. And transportation gets this rap of being so stressful on livestock and why in the world would it be that stressful? It's going to be interesting to see if that one gets on again. If her buddies come with her, she may not. We did this one time in a big replacement heifer, kind of, the trailer was completely full. She kind of kept getting bumped off of it, and she'd get back on it. She'd push the rest of them back on there. But it's taken him a while to decide, well, he's got all the gates open. We might as well get off and see what's happening. But those are things that I think we could think about in the way we handle cattle loading them is what sets up the stress of transportation. So if we can get them on there quiet, they're going to haul quieter. There's some really good work done in, all over the United States looking at transportation stress. 
I think some of them done here as well. Uh, West Texas A&M's done quite a bit, as well as uh, uh, Ashley Stokes that was over in uh, Hawaii did a bunch shipping cattle over to the United States. The only time they actually picked up stress levels in those caves while they were transporting them by sea to the United States was when they loaded them and when they unloaded them off of the containers. Those cattle actually did not show signs of stress until a person showed up to handle them. So if we're the reason they're being stressed, it's our job to do it as quiet and calmly as possible. And they're all like, well, what was that all about? But next time they get on there, it ought to be pretty quiet and pretty easy as well, okay? So it's, to me, it's interesting to see how they respond to pressure and being able to put that first bunch on there and keep pressure on them to get them to jump. We'll talk about trailer height has an impact on it as well. We can talk about that this afternoon a little bit more. But if they don't have to jump very high, they get on easier. Cows are not great jumpers. They can, but they're not great at it. Okay, so keep that as close to level as you can. Uh, if you can back up over some dirt, it actually helps because they're walking on dirt, it's a better surface, they'll get on quieter. Uh, don't have it butt up because you can, remember, uh, Jess even talked about that gap we see between the trailer and that. If you have a board or something you try to bump up against or back up just barely over the top of it, they can run a leg under there and actually break a leg. So. How you set that up and how your trailer loadout is does impact how easy they'll load onto a, to a stock trailer. And so stock trailers, the aluminum trailers are getting higher for some reason. Uh, a lot of the older bumper pulls were pretty low, low to the ground, but a lot of the aluminums are quite a bit higher. So we're having cattle to jump more. So I would look at building some kind of elevated ramp for those cattle to be able to get on the trailer easier. Semis, the loading sheet. How many of you load semis at your house? Quite a few of you. You know, a good loading chute is really important. At least 10 feet of flat surface before you hit the loadout. I mean, loading chute, 20 feet is probably better if you have help to get that flow started. And then if you can keep the truck driver out of the truck, it normally helps. So that whole point of balance thing, if they're not used to going by that person, if he's up in the truck and they realize he is, then they're going to have to be slower going in there and he's going to wind up poking every one of them with a hot shot to get them to go on in the truck. Uh, the biggest issue I've had a lot of times with truck drivers is they'll get up and straddle the door or the back area. And, it, and even if you don't see them, they're in there moving that hot shot or flag or whatever it is. And the one behind that calf can see it. And so they start balking. And then that starts a whole chain of balking. So if you can keep them from getting in the truck, I've got a really good video on YouTube. We were loading a truck for a, uh, basically just to see. We wanted to video it and follow those cattle through. They were coming to Kansas. And the truck driver said, well, I've been to the feed yards. They do this low stress handling, so that stuff doesn't work. I said, well, just bear with us tomorrow and let us load your truck and we'll see how it goes. And we were loading a compartment about every 45 seconds. It took us that long to get the cattle in each compartment. And it, the hardest thing I had to do was, I got him out of the truck, but he wouldn't get off the catwalk. So it, finally he saw he was causing a problem. He stepped off the catwalk and the cattle all loaded without anybody doing anything other than me running them through the bud box. They went all the way up on the truck into the nose without anybody having to do anything. And he actually called us when he got to Kansas that I have to admit that I've never had anything haul that quiet or come off the truck that easy. So that's the other thing about it. unloading a truck. A lot of times we get right there, we open that gate and there's cattle, there's butts right there at us, isn't there? And so then we go up in the truck and we start forcing more cattle back there to the gate. The best thing to do is to push cattle away from whatever gate you just opened so they've got room to turn around and find their way out. So very often we actually are pushing cattle the wrong way to try to get them to come out of the truck. 